This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now from Studio B, your hosts, Jason Shepard and Dave McCann. This is BYU Sports Nation. We are live. We are your day-to-day play-by-play right here in Studio B. We are presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today is Wednesday, April 6th. 2022. Thank you for joining us. It is great to have you with us on a Wednesday. My name is Jason Shepard, and I'm teamed up with a man who was ringside the night Mike Tyson bit the ear of Evander Holyfield, Dave McCann. It was the uh, wildest night of my professional life. I remember it like it was uh, June 28, 1997, and I was with Evander a couple of years ago, and this, I'm pretty sure it was the left ear, this part of his ear is still missing. They could never get it back on. And uh, to see one human being bite another one Ugh. on global TV in a massive sold-out MGM was just something I never saw coming. We were and neither did Evander. N- n- clearly, neither <laughs> did Evander. We were having this discussion before we went on air. Like, this was... Obviously, you spent so much time in Vegas, and yeah. and I was asking, you know, you, you said that you had been to all of those big fights, and you were talking about De La Hoya and Tyson and how that was just such a spectacle and something that Vegas took so much pride in. Yeah, and that's why it was fun to have BYU down there yeah. for uh, Allegiant Stadium to christen that place for college football to put all those fans in there. Uh, when there's a big event, like there's one coming up October 8th, at Allegiant with Notre Dame and BYU in Vegas. It's just such a, there's such an energy there. And boxing was off the charts. And so we really bring this up today. If you're judging how is today going to be successful or not, in the event that you don't have your ear bitten off (laughs) today, at the end of the day, give thanks to know that that it could have been a worse day than it was. It's, it's, you know what? It's the little things. It's the tender it's mercies. It's the little tender mercies. It's the tender mercies of not having your ear <laughs> bitten off. Or you need a good surgeon, either one of those two. It was, yeah, which I'm sure there's probably some around. Let's get to your show lineup. Big 12 will have a new commissioner within the next few months. How does the announcement that Bob Bowlesby is stepping down affect BYU and the future Of the Big 12, we will discuss. The uh, alumni game legend, Brian Keel, joins us to recap his miraculous catch. His head's so big now. (laughs) We have to do it on Zoom because the studio's not big It's not going to fit in here. And uh, also, what he thinks is a realistic timeline for BYU to be competing for a Big 12 title. Also, with three Cougar hoopsters entering the transfer portal, does that help or hurt BYU hoops. We'll get to all that, but first, let's get to today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. And as Shep mentioned, Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby announcing he's going to step down at a later date in this year, a decade of leading the conference. We're going to have much more on Bowlesby and what might be next coming up in just a couple of minutes. BYU sophomore guard Hunter Erickson has entered the transfer portal. Erickson is the third Cougar to do so, joining Nate Hansen and Jeremy Dowdell. And that actually brings us to uh, our early entry in our question of the day. Our question of the day is, will the transfer portal be a boom or bust for BYU basketball? Make sure you chime in on all of our social media platforms. Use BYUSN as the hashtag. We'll get to some of your responses coming up in just a little bit. BYU baseball drops a 7-5 decision last night at Dixie State. Wilk, Zipidi, Watkins each hit home runs. Watkins hit two, but the Cougars left 10 runners on base. BYU hosts Santa Clara Thursday through Saturday on the BYU TV app. It's an enormous series for a team that's three and six in the WCC. Yeah, and Santa Clara comes in just the opposite at Mm -hmm. six and three in conference play. Men's and women's track and field moving up in the rankings. The women jumped 16 spots to number 10 in the latest USTF CCCA's national rankings. While the men moved up four spots to number 13. 14 athletes, by the way, are currently ranked top 25 nationally in their events. It's quite a program. Women's golf, they're in 16th place out of 16 teams at the Silverado Showdown in Napa, California. It's not the Cougars week. Anna Hakowitz tied for 23rd. Alicia May Mateo tied for 39 through three holes. I think they're looking forward to the next tournament. We were talking yesterday about the big softball game between BYU and Utah up in Salt Lake City. Well, weather had uh, a different idea. Weather forced it to be rescheduled. The game will now be played on May 3rd 
in Salt Lake City. Let's hope for a much warmer day yes. for that game. Swim and Dive gets a near sweep of the MPSF Awards. Tice Rouston is the Women's and Men's Dive Coach of the Year. Sherry Skablund is the Men's Coach of the Year, first year at BYU. Kennedy Cribs, the Women's Diver of the Year. Javi Armada, the Men's Swimmer of the Year. Tanner Nelson, Freshman of the Year. Mickey Strauss, Men's Diver of the Year. Congratulations. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. And news broke yesterday afternoon that Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby will be stepping down after a decade in charge of the Big 12. Bowlesby will stick around until a replacement is made, which, according to Texas Tech President Lawrence Chauvinick, uh, should take about 90 days. So roughly three months and the conference will have a new commissioner. Back in February, if you'll remember, Commissioner Bowlesby was actually in town. He and some of his staff were taking a, a tour and meeting everybody here on campus at BYU. And that day, he actually joined BYU Sports Nation while he was here. He said that the new Big 12 conference is in a good place. We're in three time zones. Uh, we've got great traditions. Uh, we've got great recruiting areas, great alumni bases. Um, it has all the ingredients of being extraordinarily successful. Well, and, and I think I agree with him. It is in a good place. And it wasn't that long ago where we were talking about it not being in a good place. But decisions that were made, bringing in these new teams, you have obviously the, the rights, the TV rights that will be negotiated in the future. Right now, it is in a good spot. But now that, Dave, they lose their commissioner, who's been kind of spearheading all of this, yeah. how does this change the future of the Big 12 and obviously with BYU in it? Well, BYU's never had him as a commissioner, so I don't know if it changes any day-to-day -day things because there's nothing to compare it to as far as, hey, this is what he was like last year or two years ago. That's different for a lot of the teams in the Big 12. Uh, some of those teams, schools, probably aren't big fans of Bullsby because Texas and Oklahoma left on his watch to the SEC, and they're not all happy about that. Right. Um, you know, it, for, for, for a league, he's had a voice on the national scene. He wanted the playoff expansion, didn't get it, didn't get the support for it, but it helped move it down the road a little bit. You know, it's coming eventually. He wanted it uh, right away. And so you lose that voice and you lose the um, credibility in that league. But with four teams coming in and two teams going out, it's a whole new league. Maybe time for a new face. They're going to have a new TV deal. Everything's new moving forward from what used to be the old Big 12, which then was the old Big 8. Yeah, well, and because you have the new TV rights coming up and you're going to be going through those negotiations over the next couple of years, uh, because it currently ends in 2025, so you, you have some time to be able to do that. But, you know, it does make a whole lot of sense that if you're going to have a new commissioner, get them in now and let them be a part of those negotiations and let this deal be under that person's watch, uh, that does make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, and, and let them have input on divisions yeah. and scheduling. And, you know, I think might most be intrigued by this development is Texas and Oklahoma. Is there a commissioner put in place that's a little more friendly to getting them out? Hey, we're leaving. Let's negotiate so we can leave before 25. Bowlesby was absolutely not. He was offended. Right. They left under his watch and didn't tell him about it. Um, so that was never going to be a, yeah, let's work something out. Maybe someone else comes in and works something out where, where the league gets a lot of money and Texas and Oklahoma move on. Um, we'll see. But I'll bet you those two schools were kind of like, Oh, really? Someone new's coming to the table. <laughs> Maybe we can get out sooner. You know, Houston, uh, Central Florida, Cincinnati, and BYU, they're coming from leagues with commissioners. Right. So whoever it is, whether it was going to be Bowlesby or, or the next person, man or woman, it's going to be brand new. And so, I, you know, I think for BYU, it's like, well, this is the guy who said, yes, come on in, representing the presidents, because that's what the commissioner does. But he was also the guy that said no in 2015. Yeah. So... You know, the, the time will tell. Well, and you mentioned, you know, the, the possibility of, of who's a candidate who may be, you know, in that job within the next 90 days. According to Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports, he says uh, a short list of candidates has emerged among the names. Former West Virginia Athletic Director Oliver Luck, obviously the father of Andrew Luck, formerly of the NFL. Uh, here's an interesting name for you, probably a little blast from the past. Pac-12 Associate Commissioner Jamie Zaninovich, former WCC Commissioner 
for six years. So BYU certainly uh, familiar with Jamie Zaninovich. Also, Texas Tech AD Kirby uh, Hockett. I hope I said that last name right. Uh, Washington State President Kirk Schultz and Baylor President Linda Livingstone. So those are a couple of the names that, according to Dennis Dodd, uh, have emerged as possible candidates to replace Bob Bowlesby. It was nice to have Bowlesby come here to BYU and see everything for himself and sit right here and, and get to experience BYU TV. Uh, but the new commissioner will have that opportunity, too, only he'll have to go to all the schools. Right. He or she, in the event that they're not already a, a, a Big 12 uh, product. But, um, you know, what does it mean for BYU and, and BYU TV and broadcasting and all of that? Uh, when Bowlesby came here, he saw everything. It's shiny and new, and he was impressed. But the bigger conversation was Bowlesby with Gloria Navarro, the commissioner of the WCC, who explained to him what BYU TV's role has been with BYU. That meant more to Bowlesby than coming here and seeing the circus and having a cougar tail. Um, and and I, and and so a cougar for, tail though did leave a lasting impression. He didn't finish it though. <laughs> he we learned he got a lot three that night. Of the he way through, yes. It. But I think in moving forward, whoever comes in, yeah, they'll come in here and they'll go to Houston, they'll go to those schools, but they'll also reach out. And uh, there's no bigger endorser of BYU than Gloria Navarez, the commissioner of the WCC. We saw that at the tournament where we were at most recently, and we asked her about yeah. it. And she's been in contact with the Big 12, and, 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 and she has nothing but good to say about all of that stuff. So those fearing that BYU is going to lose some footing because of Bowlesby, I don't think that's the case. Well, and I, it was interesting reading some of the articles that were put out yesterday. You know, a lot of this, uh, in terms of Bowlesby's decision to step down, seems he's, you know, he's just just kind of fed up with, with everything. And it, not necessarily running the conference, but, you know, we mentioned he's part of the College Football Playoff Expansion Committee and really thought that they were going to get that expansion vote and it didn't happen, and that was frustrating. You brought up the fact that the Texas and Oklahoma situation blindsided not just him, but everybody in that conference. And after a decade, you know, sometimes it's, it's time, you know what, I just want to, I just want to take a break from this. Right. And, and I think you can understand that. And it's okay to retire. Yeah, it's okay in your life to go. Hey, you know what? I'm kind of done doing this. Yeah, I want to do something else, and uh, and he's in that spot, in that time of his life where he's had enough and doesn't need it anymore. But he's still going to be in the ear of whoever. He's Absolutely. still going to be a consultant and all that stuff. Um, and so it's going to be an interesting year. The first Big 12 schedule comes out in October yep. for 2023. That'll be the first stamp of Big 12 life. And there'll be a new commissioner by then as well. And, and then that's when we kind of launch and go, okay, let's see what this is really going to be like. But we saw yesterday on this show those financial projections. <laughs> um, and, and so whoever the commissioner is is coming into a very healthy league moving forward with or without Texas. Um, and, and all the new members coming in, too, are like, we can adjust to whoever the commissioner is. They're paying $41 million right, in yeah. 2023. Okay. Do you have, and, and not specifically just for this situation, but situations that are similar, in, in this case, do you think it would be beneficial to bring somebody in that's already in the conference, that knows the conference and the landscape? Or are you on the side of the argument that says, you know what, let's bring some fresh eyes, somebody that's not a part of this, and bring them in possibly with some new ideas? Does it matter one no, way or the other? I don't other? think it matters. I don't think it matters. I think it's good if you bring someone in who knows the league and knows the history and knows the, the Texas-Oklahoma thing. Right. Uh, and then there might also be someone to come in cold turkey and go, um, you guys are leaving, see ya. This is, this is what I want to build with. Uh, and so I, th I think you just get a good candidate. You don't have to have a candidate to come in and build something. You have a candidate to come in and maintain something that's already been built. Yeah. And these four teams coming in take, take away the fear of the league dissolving by losing Texas and Oklahoma. You're going to have a new TV deal in 2025. Uh, everything from every stat that we've seen regarding sports is that interest in sports is only growing Prices are only going up. No one's ever negotiated for a lower price. <laughs> uh, that just doesn't seem to happen. It seems like we would in our economy, but it just keeps going up. Uh, I think whoever it is is going to – this is this is a league you want to be in. Oh, and by the way, you've inherited the best basketball league in, in the entire country. Yeah, back-to-back -back national champions between Baylor and Kansas. Yeah. I also think there's something to be said for, you know, with everything – new with the four new teams and eventually you're going to have a new you know tv deal all of this it, to be able to grow together with a new commissioner uh, and certainly not saying that that commissioner bowlsby couldn't have done a great job if he if he stayed on but there there's probably something to be said for you know everybody that's new to the league whether it's the four teams just kind of growing this 
together and moving it forward together. I think there's something to be said for that. And the presidents have the power, and that's important to remember. The presidents are who kept BYU out. The presidents are who brought BYU in last September. All right, uh, so obviously that was our uh, football discussion. Uh, we'll discuss this a little bit more later on in the program, but we do want to shift just a little bit to uh, basketball and get back to our question of the day. Uh, our question of the day is this. Will the transfer portal be a boom or bust for BYU basketball, Hunter Erickson, the latest BYU basketball player to enter the transfer portal. That's now three uh, within the last uh, couple of days. So let's hear from you, BYU Sports Nation. Let's get the voice of the nation. This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response coming from Instagram, Logan White says, more boom than bust. This coaching staff has shown that they can get talented impact players from the portal. And that's a great point right out of the gate. Uh, this is a staff that has been very well versed in the transfer portal for not just at BYU, but while they were at Utah Valley, they know how to utilize the transfer portal to find what they need. I have the utmost confidence in Coach Pope and his staff uh, that they know how to maneuver everything that goes along with the transfer portal. Well, and we saw this year this roster is not built for the Big 12, so they got to rebuild it. And this is what's taking place, a, a rebuilding, and some have to leave for others to come. And uh, real quick on Twitter, Tyson Peterson says, it will be a boom. Athletes want to be a part of our program, not only because we'll join the Big 12, but because they've seen all types of people thrive in our program. Make sure to use hashtag BYUSN on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and chime in. Just getting started today, coming up the real reason, it has to be, <laughs> that HBO's Hard Knocks will be must-see TV. And it's something BYU fans are very familiar with. And the hero of the BYU alumni game, Brian Keel, joins us next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. And now, introducing your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So is this where we get the BYU card? But of course, the only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball home Thursday to host WCC foe Santa Clara. See the game at 8 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Cougars need a big weekend starting tomorrow night. We are live in Studio B where your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play alongside Dave McCann. My name is Jason Shepard. Thank you for tuning in on a Wednesday. And look, Dave, 
when you get, have the opportunity to get one of the greats on this show, you do it. And I mean greats for several reasons. Most recently, he is the hero of the alumni game, catching the game-winning touchdown. He is Brian Keel, and he joins us on Zoom. Brian, how has your life changed <laughs> since last week? Well, you know, it's just everywhere I go, people pat me on the back. Uh, I get uh, all of my root beers paid for, so uh, things, things are good. Life is good. Did your street cred go up at the house at all, at least? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, I have three kids, uh, nine, seven, and four. None of them have seen me play before, so it was it was fun for them. Um, I'm told that my seven-year-old son was running down the sideline on that last play, and he got lost in the mayhem, and uh, it, it was fun. It was a fun, fun week for the Keels. At what point, uh, as that ball's about halfway to you, flying in the midair from Max Hall, did you think that it was coming to you? It, you know, it's just so weird um, how things happen. I just, I just had this this weird, un, unrealistic confidence that I was going to get the ball, even just when I was lining up. Um, it was the first time I'd ever been on the offensive side of a Hail Mary. And I just felt like Max is going to throw it to me and I'm going to get it. And when the ball was in the air, I was just tracking it the whole way. And I just, I just felt like I'm going to get this ball. And if you watch it on slow-mo, I had a huge assist uh, from Cody Hoffman. So uh, hats go out to him. It was definitely a team effort, but it was just something special. Well, Brian, I mean, it, it was a massive catch. I mean, it was the biggest thing, but you said you may have been upstaged by your own daughter this week. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm not the only one with a game winning touchdown. So my nine year old daughter, she's been watching her brother Cruz uh, play flag football the last couple of years. And she decided she wants to play flag football. So we signed her up there. She's on a co-ed team. There's three other girl or two girls. So three girls on her team. And um, they were down. And this is her first game on Saturday. They were down and they give her the ball and she takes it down the left sideline to the house walk off touchdown game winner with like 15 seconds left and it was one of the greatest things i've ever seen and she just her her excitement and it was just so fun so i definitely was was second fiddle after that quite uh, quite a few days for the keel family i would say right a week of all weeks it, it was Cruz, uh, Cruz, his, his flag, that's my son. His flag football starts next week. He's still doing soccer. He had a hat trick on Saturday. So it was, it was uh, in soccer. It was, it was a good week of sports for the Keel family. Hey, good luck next week. Good luck next week. Yeah. If, if it doesn't live up. Hey, Brian, <laughs> uh, we talked with Kalani Sataki after the game and actually during the game. Um, and, and the purpose behind this game, there were a lot of entertainment and all that stuff, but was to, to bring, the former players back together, make them feel at home, and also engage them in the recruiting process as BYU builds for the Big 12. What message did you take out of all that? Yeah, he he spoke to us at lunchtime and it was one of the best messages I've heard. Vintage Kalani uh, got me choked up and it was awesome. Um, but the, the, the gist of his message was that if they can get their recruits on campus, they almost always come. And it's it's the it's the the glue is the players and the, those recruits getting the chance to to meet the players and 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 to just sucked into the fabric of what is BYU. And he said, you know, if we can get the alumni involved in that too, in that glue, then it'll just be that much better. And so that's half of it. And the other half of it is just for the alumni themselves. Um, he said when he was done playing, he kind of felt out of place and wasn't sure how welcome he was. And and it, anyway. Obviously, they're always welcome and alumni are welcome. But what he wants to do is make sure they know that, that they feel it and that everybody feels like they're part of the BYU family. And it was a great event and look forward to, to many more. What did that mean to you, that part that you were just talking about? Because, you know, Kalani made the comment, doesn't matter if you're a Lavelle guy or a Croton guy or a Bronco guy or a Kalani guy, you're, you're a BYU guy. I have to imagine, not just to you, but to to everybody involved with BYU football, that was music to their ears. Yeah, and you know, it's you always wonder where your place is. Um, and I felt that even when I got done, and and I was a Bronco guy, I was Croton and Bronco guy, but more mostly a Bronco guy. And Bronco was still there right when I was done, and and you just kind of feel 
it's just, you know, and it's just different. You're not sure what your standing is. And so it's just nice to be reassured and to have, if there is any doubt or uncertainty to have those fears just erased. And, and so Kalani is going out of his way to make sure that, that former players feel that way. And, and it does, it, it just, it makes the whole experience better and it helps with recruiting and it helps with the program. It just buoys everything up and, and it, it really is, back to where the program's headed in, in a great direction, and this is part of it. The NFL is looking at flag football in the Olympics in 2028. That's what they'd love to see. There's not a lot of guys with tape in that kind of a touch <laughs> flag football environment, and you've got a lot of it. Is this something that uh, the Keels will be looking at 2028? Yeah, so whoever's in charge of that, they uh, you know if they're looking for uh, an old-time dual threat, both way player, <laughs> I'm their guy. So uh, hopefully, you know, the tape speaks for itself and and uh, they should make good decisions there. <laughs> Brian, at what point did the soreness go away? Are you still in the process of uh, dealing with that right now? Oh, dude, that I was blown away. I knew I would be sore, but I was blown away about how sore I was. Um, I played uh, I played basketball on Monday and I was still sore. Um, so, I mean, what is that four days later? And, you know, I had to take it easy in basketball. <laughs> I was still <laughs> sore from the flag football game the week before. It's just different. I play basketball almost every week. And so I'm in, in pretty good shape, but, uh, it's just different because in football, you're, you're long speed and, you know, it's just open it up and firing muscles that have been asleep for a decade. Uh, it was, uh, it was fun. It was great to get out there and, and shake off some of that rust. Speaking of asleep for a decade, our David Nixon, um, did you steal some of his thunder from that, that night while you were out doing your thing? It seemed like he was off the sideline drinking a lot of Gatorade during that, during that night. They, you know, it's funny. I'm not going to throw Dave under the bus too much, but I will a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, I saw him on Saturday and, uh, our sons play on, uh, on a, a baseball team together. So I, we were at a baseball game and um, we were talking about that. And he's like, you know, he's like, you must've gone harder than me. Cause I wasn't sore at all. <laughs> and that's what I knew. That's what I knew. He really didn't go hard. Cause if, if he did, he would have been sore like the rest of us old timers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was different. And you could see it on the field. There was, there was different effort levels uh, for, for various people. And, um, and mine, you know, I, mine was effort level a hundred. So I was, I was feeling it. He is a, a BYU great and an alumni game legend, Brian Keel joining us here on BYU sports nation. And Brian, let's push this forward to the current team and the upcoming season. Obviously the last two years have been really, really fun for BYU fans and everybody associated with the program. What are your expectations for the upcoming season for this year's Cougar team? I always have the highest expectations. That's just how my nature is. And so nothing has changed for this year. The schedule looks daunting. It could, it's always, you know, on paper, it's, there's a lot of teams that could be really good. And sometimes they end up being really good. Sometimes they're sleeper teams, but there's some, some legit teams on the schedule. So the schedule is, uh, can be daunting, but I think we got the talent. I think we have the players, the program has the momentum and the trajectory um, and I expect, you know, to do the same things we've done the last couple of years and to just build off of that momentum. And, um, you know, I would love to see us get over the hump and make it into a new year six game. Um, I just, what a fitting ending to independence. That would be, uh, just a, a Cinderella ending. So, um, you know, that's not the minimum for a great season, obviously, but um, that's what I would be if I was on the team or I would be pushing that. That would be my ultimate goal. Depth is such a big deal. Uh, this level of football and especially going into the big 12 and BYU has, has done a lot. I think we'll see the deepest team that maybe we've ever seen uh, when they fill the roster this fall because of all of that. When do you think BYU will contend in the big 12? That's a great question. Um, I mean, so if you watch us against Baylor last year, I mean, we weren't there. And so we play them again this year, and I would love to see a step forward uh, in that game when we play them this year. Um, and some of those, those, those other P5 schools that are on the schedule, um, 
that are that are really really talented. It'll be a good measuring stick. But I, I you know, I'm not in charge of the program. But if I was, I, I would just have the the emphasis and the goal to hit the ground running. Um, I, I wouldn't want to come in there and be anybody's whipping boy. And that doesn't mean that we're going to take it by storm from year one. But I I expect us to be in the middle in the hunt and be competing. Um, and, and win wins and losses are one thing, but it's a matter of being in every game. And, you know, maybe if our win loss record isn't where it is wh or where we would like it to be, but we've competed in every game, then that's progress. That's success. I would, I would like to see that. What I will be very disappointed is, is if we're just getting blown out and, and it looks like we don't belong on the field with teams that, that will be disappointing. I would, I would like to see us be in every football game well and and brian look when you played you, you were in a conference you knew and now granted it wasn't p5 but you knew the importance of winning a conference championship how exciting is it for you to think about the possibility that not just byu being back into a conference but being back into a p5 conference where the level of competition and the stakes are so much higher yeah i'm jealous um yeah, and you know, being in a conference isn't everything, but it is something, and it is a huge deal. Um, I'm glad we didn't settle, if you will, and, and go back to a, a mid-major conference. Uh, I'm glad that we hung tight and waited for for a seat at the table, and you know it, it paid off. That patience has paid off. Um, being in a conference again, it is a big deal, and playing for a conference championship is is it's such a it's a great motivator. Uh, every workout in the off season, um, it's something to look forward to, to, to work towards. And, you know, I was able to win two of them and I cherish those. They're they're, they're I still remember those memories. And, and so that's something for these guys to work for, towards. And, and I, I said, I jealous because the program, just the trajectory and to be uh, on the big stage in a, in a big time conference, I'm, I'm jealous of those kids. I'm just so excited for them. Brian Keel, can we uh, put you down as an early commit for the 2023 alumni game? Sign me up. Sign, Sign me up. up. I He's, just I need I need more looks on offense. That's all I need. So. You talk. You need need more looks on offense. Talk to your quarterback, but we've got you down as the first early signee for early signee. For next yes. Year. I have a feeling, Brian, you're not going to be the only one that's willing to commit. I've got to imagine there were a lot of people that maybe weren't able to be a part of it that are not going to miss the chance a second time. I'm for sure. I, I'm sure there are a lot of people that saw that and had some serious fear of missing out. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Brian, great stuff. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by. And it's always great to talk with you and uh, let us know if the the keel uh, excellence continues uh, with your yeah. kids uh, with their upcoming sports. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. There we go. The great Brian Keel joining us here on BYU Sports Nation. He's good. We got to get Ty Detmer to come play in the alumni game. I want to see. Uh, we were having this discussion last week. For me, the ultimate, if we could somehow get Jim McMahon to come back, that Jim would McMahon, be amazing. Steve Young? Steve, get them all back. They can still throw. I'm saying. No one, Max never took a hit the whole game. That's what I'm saying. Look, and you can make sure that they don't get hit. Yeah. You can put, put on, the, uh, put on the, the green or the, the red jersey, make sure everybody's As long aware. as they don't go out for a pass, there's a good <laughs> chance they're not going to get hit. That's right. Coming up, will the transfer portal be a boom or bust for BYU hoops? Things are getting very busy in that area. And how many BYU football alums have their eyes set on the 2028 Summer Olympics? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001.
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. When we sit down to watch TV, it's a fun way to unite your family, be entertained, and to watch what's on BYU TV. Brings our family together. We all love BYU TV. If you're watching it with the family, you, you will have a good time and you can reconnect and you can bond with your family and have a better relationship with them. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. He is Dave, I am Jason, and this is BYU Sports Nation, and that is a pylon. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. So yesterday, Jamal Williams sent this tweet out highlighting fans' excitement for him and the Lions being on HBO's Hard Knocks. Here it is. Is Jamal the reason Hard Knocks is featuring the Detroit Lions? Could there be another reason? Well, look, I don't know if it's the reason. They are quickly going to find out that they are so happy they chose the Lions because of Jamal. The guy is built for stuff like this. When they called the Lions, they must have said, what? You want to what? I have a feeling it was because of their head coach. You know, he's a little unorthodox. He says funny things. Yeah. But they'll quickly realize, wait a minute, wherever Jamal is, the camera Jamal's needs thing. to be. 100%. Yeah, that'll be fun to see. Are you a Hard Knocks guy, by the way? No. Because I usually will get HBO just for Hard Knocks and then cancel the subscription. Oh, really? Afterwards. Yeah, I, I've seen it here and there. Uh, with Jamal, it's it's a different thing. It's it's must see TV. But yeah, you know when they're hard knocking with the Falcons, yeah. I'm like, oh, we'll see you in September. Exactly. All right, it's a uh, benchmark day as we look ahead to the 2022 BYU football season. As we are now, how many days from kickoff? Countdown to the Bulls. Not ready, Dave. 150 days. <laughs> what? You you're gonna, you're gonna leave. You're gonna leave me out there. You're gonna hang me out there. You drive? are a tradition unlike any other. <laughs> I didn't know we sang that. Well, okay, so now you know. Are you willing to participate no. next time? That's kind of what I thought. No, but I am excited. 150 days. 150 days. It's gonna and go we fast. Will be, uh, we'll be having. As soon as we get through Stadium of Fire at the Stadium of Dawn. <laughs> what? That's your. That's your benchmark. Once Stadium of Fire is Once done. Once that football starts. Who we got this year? Is it Tim McGraw? Yeah. Nice. It's gonna be awesome. Get Very your nice. tickets. We'll see you there. All right, the NFL is pushing to have flag football included in the Olympic Games. At least that's their idea for this week. How many BYU alums do you expect to make that team, considering what you saw at the alumni football game? I mean, do I expect? None. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how many do I expect to try out? Probably a lot. Like, they've got the tape already. Yeah. You just send in the, here's our, you know, I'm just going to send you this link to a game on BYU TV. Tell me if you like what you see and let, and get back with We me. just heard Brian Kiel say if they're looking for someone old <laughs> who can play both sides of the ball, they got plenty of tape on him. Uh, by the way, and, and so this, I, I guess American football was included in the 1932 Olympic Games. I, I did not know that. I didn't either. Are you in favor of them adding the sports? They've already added a couple of ones in both the winter you know and the summer. They already got curling on there. I'd watch flag football. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about like to see life. us match up against Japan in a battle. Ooh. Would send our six nine guys out there nice. catching the end zone. You know. Interesting. Well, we'll see if it, we'll see if it happens. Yeah. Probably a long shot. All right, BYU fan Jackson Jennings posted this tweet yesterday that included a selfie with Spencer Linton and Blaine Fowler, who just happened to be hanging out at the Masters. Jackson says, running with the big dogs, Blaine Fowler and Spencer Linton. Well, technically, I was directing traffic while they were attending the Masters. So technically, I was on BYU Sports Nation, not for the last time either. Clearly, you're on right now, Jackson. Yeah. So here's the question, Dave. Will someone post a better selfie with Jerem Jordan, who is at Disneyland right now? Look for him at It's a Small World. It'll be on that over and over and over. Hey, maybe it'll be with uh, Tom Homo, because apparently they ran into each other at Disneyland the other day. Yeah, you guys get around. It's the summer. It's the off season. 
Hope it doesn't rain on him today at the Masters. <laughs> or Disneyland. Or Disneyland. Speaking of BYU Sports Nation and the Masters, what will have your attention the most tomorrow at noon Eastern time? This show, Tiger at the Masters, or opening day of Major League Baseball? Okay, so the answer very easily is this show. I am hosting it uh, with Kristen. Right. So I feel like I need to make sure that my attention is 100% on this show. Plus, we're going to have the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Satake, on this show tomorrow. So the answer is BYU Sports good. Nation. But as soon as this show is done, it has absolutely nothing to do with the Masters. It is all full speed ahead, Major League Baseball opening day. I like days where there's big choices to make like this. Yes. As for the McCanns, we'll be at my nephew's wedding. Yeah. And then after all of that, I'll get my phone out and see what's what. Yeah, see, that's the beauty of the cell phones is you can kind of follow it all and really not miss out, whether you want to look at scores or if you actually want to watch something. It's all in the palm of your hand. Yes, it is. Big day tomorrow. Yes, it Lonnie's is. Lonnie's here. That's awesome. Coming up, a BYU team competing for a fifth national championship today. And will the transfer portal be a friend for BYU hoops? This is BYU Sports Nation. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. This has been one of the most beautiful weeks of my life. I've never felt so much love. What you're doing is, is something beautiful. Thank you. I will forever be thankful because I found real happiness, and that's within the community that we have made. And they made such a huge impact on my life. These are the type of people that really make the world a better place. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Friday's a doubleheader for BYU softball as they host LMU in a matchup of the top two contenders in the WCC. Uh, it's going to be 71 degrees on Friday. It's going to be awesome. You watch the games live on BYU TV and the app starting at 7 Eastern time. That's Friday. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Jason Shepard. Dave McCann with you, and uh, we talked about this earlier. BYU guard Hunter Erickson has now joined Nate Hansen and Jeremy Dowdell in the transfer portal. That's three guys so far who are looking for different opportunities. The question I'll ask you, is that a concern for you right now? No, and I think there's going to be some more. But in, in until there's a certain player in that mix uh, that is going to be counted on for next year, then, then that becomes a bit of a concern just because of you see a lot of departures and you're still waiting on on entries. Um, but this is a, this is a needed thing for this staff. These guys want to play. They're not going to be able to play here. They should be able to go play somewhere else. That's the beauty of the portal. It's the beauty of not having to sit out with a one-year transfer rule. It's also the beauty of a, of a staff, as Chris Burgess sat here with us yesterday. It's the beauty of a staff to go, you know what, we're not where we need to be. we got another year before the Big 12. What are we going to do to get there? And the portal's sitting right here, like, you know, Costco. Let's go see what's, <laughs> see what's available, what fits into the cart. Are they going to buy in bulk? Is that what you're saying? I, I think 
<laughs> Clearly, there's going to be some bulk purchases. Um, and so everyone wins in a sense. Uh, now, if you're tied to these guys and you feel bad, you might have felt you got a raw deal or this or that. But they want to play college basketball. They have an opportunity. Uh, and BYU has the job, the staff, of getting a competitive team for the Big 12. Um, and now they have an opportunity. And, and this is life. And, and, and it moves forward. Yeah, it's not a cause for concern because we see this year in and year out, and it's not just a BYU basketball thing. It's everywhere. Every, and look, this happened under Coach Rose as well. Every team goes through this where there is a, a roster shakeup and guys that maybe you know feel like they should be getting more playing time and they say maybe there's another opportunity to go. You know, There may be a guy that, that maybe hasn't lived up to what you thought he was going to do. So every program in America goes through this situation where there's going to be probably at least one, two, sometimes three or more guys that are going to leave a program and you're going to have to bring – new people in. That just happens everywhere, every year. It's an interesting so, yeah. dynamic because, uh, like Blaine and I interviewed 20, however many games we did this year, 20, 25. That means we interviewed 25 coaches right. that weren't named Mark Pope. They were the opposing coaches. Um, and, and the growing theme with kids today is they're all going to the NBA. And whether it's you're, you're the first guy or at the end of the bench, they just are being robbed of an opportunity because they're all NBA players. And that makes it hard because there can only be five that play. And uh, your bench is usually three, maybe four guys who get in. And then the rest are consigned to being practice bodies. But everyone wants to run after the dream of the NBA. They're not all NBA players, but they think they're NBA players. And so when they're not getting their minutes, then it's the natural thing of I need to go where I'm appreciated and where I can get minutes. Where you got to be careful is you might go to someone else's end of the bench. Um, and, and you leave a good opportunity here of getting a great education, being at BYU, living in all this stuff, participating in all this stuff. Um, and so that's where I think young guys might make some mistakes or young uh, women athletes make mistakes of I'm giving all this up because I want to go be a star. You might not be a star, but you might. And so that intrigue right there is what fuels the transfer portal. Get me out of here so I can go be a star. Yeah. Well, and we, look, we see this in, in football a lot, obviously, basketball certainly. But, you know, the role of a coach in terms of recruiting has changed significantly. Now, not only are you recruiting guys out of high school to come into the program, you're recruiting, you know, your own players to stay. That is a dynamic that probably was there, wasn't talked about or as visible. But certainly with the transfer portal, it has become much more uh, a topic at the forefront that now not only do you have to go and get guys to come into the program, but you now have to recruit guys to stay, certainly if you want them to stay. So the role of a coach has just changed. And it's super hard for mid-majors in small schools, as we saw with St. Peter's. They had a great run in the NCAA tournament. Their whole team's in the portal. Well, yeah, their coach hey, goes to Seton Hall, and now your top to three guys are gone. All going to the big time. And, uh, and more power to them. But, uh, but you're right. You see Kentucky add from the portal. You see North Carolina going, I need a piece. Uh, I'm going to get this guy. They're adding five-star type guys right. to their portal. It's a little bit different, but it's the same when it's, uh, hey, we need something. We've got a weakness. Let's go shopping. Well, speaking of what BYU needs, as you mentioned, we had Coach uh, Burgess on the program yesterday, and he gave us a, a, a good detailed explanation in terms of what BYU is looking for when they look into the portal. Um, we've been in contact with a number, um, a number of kids on the portal and, you know, anywhere from 10, probably 15 to 20 guys. And it's and, and our, our jobs at first is to, you know, reach out, figure out what the kid's doing. Why is he leaving? Yeah. Um, you know, just, just learn about him, his family, his journey, um, talk about our program. And, and then, and then from there we figure out if it's a need and like, if it's a need, if it's a fit. Um, we know we, we know the positions we need, right? We got we got to add some depth, and we got to add a couple of players that are losing some really good players. Obviously, Alex and Tijon, and, and those guys were losing, so we got to replace that. And so we're reaching out, we're doing our work on the portal. We're trying to make sure that we chase the guys that we think can not that was just a, us next year, but uh, help us moving forward. That was a, a good interview yesterday with him. I thought he really took us inside the game that that's being played on how to rebuild a roster. Well, look, and as he mentioned, they're gonna, they're looking at 15 to 20 guys. They're obviously only need probably two or three, or maybe that's what you will get, but you cast a wide net to see what type of options are out there. And then, like he said, then you say, okay, is it a fit for us? Is it a fit for that player to come here? There's so many things that you look at 
And and because of that, you know, you, you, you get into these battles with other schools. So you have to look at a lot of guys. And he said 15 to 20 right now they may be looking at. BYU's had a, a history of good players coming in. Yes. Transfers. I think uh, when we were growing up, no one transferred. And, and in the NBA, there wasn't free agency where uh, a, a team that was dominant in Cleveland now shows up in Miami. It was, this was your team, and that's why Bird, McHale, Parrish, Ainge, and Dennis Johnson were able to stay together for so long. Whereas now, it's, it's a free-for-all every time a contract comes up. But uh, BYU's had some, there's Matt Harms. He came in as a grad transfer. Getting the um, pass from, uh, from Alex Barcelo. Yeah, and there's some of the most recent names of guys that have come in and made contributions. And, and as we see players go they got to go before others can arrive you can't give a scholarship out that you don't have and so BYU fans have seen these three go and and I anticipate there'll probably be more um, and then they'll start to see the arrivals announced and then I think momentum will build and and uh, one last hurrah in the WCC and then and then the Big 12 and these are the guys that uh, that are going to play in the Big 12. Well, and the other part about the transfer portal is, you know, you go in sometimes with different needs. Sometimes you need a guy that's going to be a one-year guy. Mm -hmm. So, and, and BYU's had several of those guys come in where they were here for a season and they helped the team out that year. And that's what they needed was that year they needed a guy. You know, the other is maybe you, you find a guy that's a little bit earlier in his career and you can get him here. And then he's here for two seasons, maybe three seasons, depending on his eligibility. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can utilize the portal and going into the Big 12, and it all seems to come back. It all, it all funnels back into going into the Big 12. You know, BYU's got to be able to field a roster that you're going up against national champions. Think about it. it ha without the Big 12 in this kind of scenario, BYU's just selling. We're BYU. Come have a great experience. Yeah. We're going to take second to Gonzaga. We might get them on occasion, but this is us. And with the Big 12, it's like, come with us to go there and, uh, and look who they are. And, and again, like we've said over and over again, it's such a game changer for recruits who may have never, ever even looked at BYU. Colin Chandler is the top of that list. Right. Uh, but when the Big 12 came, he took a look, got sold on everything else that's true and legit and real, uh, and, and now he commits. And uh, guys like that are the key to BYU succeeding in the Big 12 and contending down the road. Yeah, if anybody's concerned that, you know, the guys are leaving, don't be concerned. This happens every year to every program. You know, guys, the, the roster is, is always in flux. And uh, this is just part of what athletics is right now. No question about it. Coming up, your responses to the transfer portal question of the day. And a rise and shout out to those who often get fans to rise and shout out. This is BYU Sports Nation. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Emily, take you. You, 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 you. <laughs> uh oh. Do you not know the groom's name? <laughs> I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Oh, my goodness. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is like share it with your loved ones. The best comedy can like increase your empathy a little bit. It's like a medicine almost. You know what I mean? It's like for all of us to do this, and nothing is coming in between us, it's just the joke that brought us together. It's, it's powerful. The thing that's more rare now is comedy that comes out of positivity. Seeing that comedy like helped us through things, we want to use that to help other people in a way. Uh, I think in season six, we had one kid whose make a wish was to come to Studio C. You could tell like this show meant a ton to him, and it, it made me be like, man, I gotta step my game up. These these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people.
This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or you can download the podcast, just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, and don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our question of the day, we were just talking about it in our last segment, will the transfer portal be a boom or bust for BYU basketball? And largely, you know, most of the com- the comments that we've had ha- have all been um, pretty favorable, but look, the transfer portal isn't for everybody. This coming in on Instagram from uh, Joe Cochran says, "Bust! It would be nice to see a recruiting class grow together over the years rather than plugging and chugging every year." It would be nice, but the game has changed, and I don't think it's going to change back. And the one thing I think is the biggest influencer in this kind of thing is kids can transfer and not have to sit out like they used to. That's a commitment. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to sit out a whole year before I can play. It's much different with what? You got an opening? Yeah. I can play right now. I'm out. Yeah, look, it's it's just a different time. And what, it, not saying that's good or bad or if you like it or you don't. It's just the way it is. That aspect of things has changed. And the likelihood that guys are going to stick around for four years, uh, whether that means they go on to the NBA because they're really good or they don't like a situation and they decide to go and look for greener pastures, that's just the way things are now. It's, it's just reality. Jay Floyd, 314 on Twitter, agrees. I think it has to be at this point. Internal development's getting harder as guys would rather transfer than work their way up the depth chart. We'll need that depth from the portal. That's true. Yeah, look, and that's what we talk a lot about depth for football Mm -hmm. and how important it is there. It's certainly important when you have a a smaller roster where you're relying on, you know, fewer people for the bulk of your production. Yeah, building up that, uh, building up that, you know, depth. Although I'm not sure that it's necessarily depth, which is what BYU is looking for now. They need a starting point guard. They need a starting right. center. So I don't, I don't know if depth right now is really what they need. They, they need some starters. And if you look at all the sports across campus, they all get to go to the portal. Yeah. They're not just football players and basketball players. Soccer team is a national contender now with an opportunity to add a player or two in the portal that they they didn't have. Same thing for uh, volleyball and, and, and right on down baseball and all those things. The portal is there, and they can uh, they can be a boom or a bust for, for every sport on campus. Time for our Elite Voice of the Day. It is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Drew Hunt on Instagram says, Boom! Pope always pulls out a solid recruiting class. I'm going to insert that in the portal. BYU is going into the Big 12, and guys have a chance to transfer to a school where they can be part of that transition in Pope. We trust, and I think a lot of people feel that way. Uh, They're very excited to see what Coach Pope and his staff can do with this roster moving into the Big 12. Coach Pope played for Kentucky. Coach Burgess played for Duke. Uh, Coach Robinson coached at LSU and Stanford. Cody Figures, an outstanding recruiter and closer. Um, they are built to recruit in the P5. Yeah. And now is their opportunity as they're going into one to do it. We'll see. But I agree with uh, Drew. I think uh, the history is on the side that, that, uh, that Mark Pope knows what he's doing. No question. Let's get to our Rise and Shout Out. It's presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Today, Dave, let's give it to the BYU Spirit Squad. They're competing in the National Cheerleading Championships beginning today in Daytona Beach, Florida. They are seeking their fifth national title. We wish them the best. Absolutely. Thanks to our guest today, Brian Keel. He was fantastic. And he was an early commit to next year's alumni He's already committed. He's in. Write that down. Our conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Dave, I'm Jason. Shout out to Nate Mickle. We'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern for more BYU Sports Nation. We're joined by Kalani Satake. Go Kooks.